Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at the V400 high-speed 3D printer from FLSun. This machine is essentially an upgraded version of their Super Racer, which I also reviewed last year. Both use the same delta configuration using the same sturdy frame extrusions, and they look very similar, but the V400 is quite a bit more advanced. It's three times faster, reaching speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second with their latest slicer profile. It has a 300 degrees Celsius hot end with a dual drive extruder built into the print head to allow a wider range of filaments to be printed. It also has clipper firmware, bed mesh auto leveling and input shaping functions, a filament runout sensor, a PEI build plate for the magnetic heat bed, a larger print volume of 300 by 300 by 410 millimeters, and it has a massive 7 inch touchscreen display for working offline. The machine is shipped unassembled, but setup is pretty simple, and it only takes around 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Incorporating the extruder into the printhead does make it a little heavier, but not by much, and I like that it's a dual drive. This printhead also has better cooling fans to match with the high temperature hot end, and they even included LEDs on the bottom to light up your prints while it's working. A runout sensor like this can be helpful in eliminating wasted time and material because you can use up a partial spool of filament for a large print without having to babysit the machine every minute to make sure that you pause it in time to change it. The sensor will detect when the filament runs out and will automatically pause the print for filament change. Textured PEI build plates like this solve a lot of adhesion problems and being removable and flexible makes it easy to break the bond between the plate and the print when it's finished. This is definitely the largest touchscreen display that I've seen for a 3D printer, and it should provide a much better user experience when working offline than most printers that I've used. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the V400 with the Super Racer. The only thing that the Super Racer has that I wish the V400 had is a drawer in the base for storing parts and tools. But overall the V400 is a nice upgrade from the Super Racer, which is still a great working machine. I put a link for my review of it in the video description below in case you'd like to learn more about it. The first thing that I wanted to do after turning on the machine was calibrate it. So I attached the magnetic Z probe to the print head and started the bed mesh calibration. To improve adhesion and get the best quality prints, most machines today use auto bed leveling. This automatically adjusts the Z axis while printing to compensate for any slight deviations in the build plate, which the machine measures during calibration by jogging the print head to multiple locations around the work area and lowering the Z probe until it touches the build plate. Then it develops a 3D mesh of the bed from those measurements that it can use for reference while printing.
After the bed mesh was complete, I removed the Z-probe and then set the Z-offset using the controls on the calibration page to lower the print nozzle until there was a slight amount of friction between it and the sheet of paper that I used as a spacer. Then I homed the machine to save it and started loading the high-speed filament that was provided with the machine. I installed the spool, cut the end of the filament at a 45 degree angle, and fed it into the runout sensor and into the PTFE tube on the print head until it hit the extruder. Then I heated the nozzle to 210 degrees Celsius before using the controls to operate the extruder and feed the filament into the nozzle. With the filament loaded, I checked out a few other features and turned on the LEDs for the printhead before opening one of the test files on the provided USB drive and starting the first print, which was a knurled nut and bolt. This took roughly an hour and a half to finish, and they printed great. I don't see any flaws at all, and they thread together like a nut and bolt should. The next test file that I tried was an overhang test. The machine seems to do well printing at angles up to 70 degrees. There is a small hole in the text, but that's an easy fix in the slicer settings. The last test file that I tried was a rabbit. This took around 30 minutes and it's flawless. So far, all of these test prints were done with a max speed of 400 millimeters per second. Next, I set up the machine in CuraSlicer software and added the new profile that allows speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second. Then I imported a Benchy model, selected the new high-speed profile before slicing, and then imported that G-code into the machine to print.
Notice that the touchscreen also displays the real-time speed of the printhead, which can range from 150 to 600 millimeters per second in this case. I printed two benchies for the sake of consistency and both finished in around 28 minutes with no issues. This isn't quite as fast as some other high speed printers, but this is definitely some of the best quality that I've seen from a printer operating at its max rated speed. Finally, I wanted to try something more complicated so I chose this articulated dragon. I like using this model for testing new printers because it has a lot of detail, moving parts, and features like low overhangs that will push the limits of a typical printer. As I expected, this also turned out great. All of the parts bonded to the build plate really well, and the layers are clean and consistent with no extrusion or ghosting issues. It is a bit stringy in some places, and the underside of the horns are a bit clumpy due to the low printing angle, but these are things that can be easily fixed by tweaking the slicer settings a bit more. With that finished, it's hard for me to find something to complain about with this machine. Setup and calibration was easy, and it worked without any issues. It's one of the fastest printers that I currently own, and it produces excellent prints even at its max rated speed. The 7-inch touchscreen also makes using it all the more enjoyable. I also really like the Delta configuration, not only because it's more interesting to watch than Core XY, for example, but it's also easier to watch and film videos because most of the action isn't taking place behind the top of the frame. As great as this machine is, FL Sun has recently launched two other machines that are even better, the S1 and the T1. These printers have all of the features that I showed in this video, and a lot more, like full enclosures with filament dry boxes, camera support, improved 350 degrees Celsius hot ends, and unbelievable print speeds of up to 1200 millimeters per second, with flow rates up to 110 cubic millimeters per second. If you're looking for some of the best machines that the 3D printing world has to offer, then I recommend visiting the links in the video description to check these out. But that's it for this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think of this machine in the comments. Thanks for watching, and take care.